Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Maika. Today we are doing my face or base product declutter. So this is the clutter containing all of my primers, my setting sprays, my foundations, my concealers, and then right behind the concealers, which you can't see, we've got some powders as well. So I think I'll tackle the uh, uh, the primers first because they're sort of um, sitting in the front and I am surprised by how many primers I have. I used to have just like a handful of primers and primer is one of those products where I really like to use one up before I move on to the next one. So I definitely don't have a lot of these like open or maybe I've only tried them once or twice. I will definitely be keeping the one that is currently in my Shop My Stash, which is this one, the Hydrating Skin Refreshing Primer. I'm working my way through this. It's by Essence. It's nice enough. Um, and that also means I'm going to be keeping the newest Essence Primer. This is the Skin Loving Sensitive Primer. So those I'm going to be keeping. Um, I'm also going to be keeping this Milani one, the Prime Light Face Primer face primer because in April, which is when this video will also be going up, I'm filming this a little bit in advance, but I'm going to be doing a full face of Milani and I bought this product to try it out for that video. So this cannot go anywhere yet. Maybe once I film that video and I really don't like it, I might want to get rid of this, but not yet, not anytime soon. Um, some things I know I can get rid of are just a little bit off <laughs> off center here, but it's these products here. The Essence Fresh and Fit Awake Primer is no longer for sale as far as I know. I had kept this around because I do quite a lot of Essence and, uh, and Catrice uh, content, and I always wanted to keep one on hand that I like, but uh, Essence has been doing some lovely things, so I don't need to keep this around. Another thing I want to get rid of is the Catrice Sungasm Pore Refining Finding Tinted Mousse. This is like one of those tinted primer kind of things, one and done kind of idea, but it really was too dark for me, so that was a bit of a sad one. The same went for the Light Beige um, My Skin Protector from Essence. I know some people like this, but this was far too drying for me. It's uh, also a matte finish and I like something a bit more dewy on my face, so this wasn't for me. And I will be decluttering both the L'Oreal Infallible Magic Essence Drops, which went blue onto my face, which I didn't love, and also the Maybelline Face Studio Prime SPF 30. This was okay, but I have, as you can see, over on this side, plenty of primers that I like, because most of what you see on the right hand side I, I will be keeping. So these are gonna go, uh, because I don't need these, they didn't work for me, they weren't perfect. Um, what you see here, let me move it over, is favorites. <laughs> favorites or new to me or things that I just recently tried or that I want to use a little bit more of. So that's what you're looking at here. Um, the uh, Let me just talk favorites. These two, the Catrice Fresh It Up Primer and the Too Faced, or Too Faced Hangover RX Primer are two of my favorites. This one was discontinued and replaced by this one. This is the Love Skin and Respect Earth Hydro Primer. And I want to do a video where I compare the two for sure. Uh, so this one is still unopened, but I went up, went to, through like two or three of these in the past. So love those. So those are going to be a keep. This is one of my favorite all-time primers. So that's going to stay. This e.l.f. Beauty Shield was unlike the Catrice product that sort of needs to just... It's a primer, but it's got a bit of tint to it, so it does perfect your complexion. This was great in the summertime for those no makeup makeup kind of days, so I do want to keep this. What's going to go is this by Catrice, the uh, Glow Beautifying Face Oil. Not sure if you can see, but right here in the bottom... Right here in the bottom, there is some shimmer particles, and no matter how much I shook this up, I could never get the shimmer to fully mix with the with the oil, and it just looked a little weird, and it also felt very oily on my face, so that I didn't like very much, so this is gonna go. What I did like in terms of, like, face oil primers are these two by Essence, but this was limited edition last year in their Bloom Baby Bloom collection, and I haven't tried it since, 
and since then they've come out with the Care Glow and Prime uh, face oil in their Hello Good Stuff uh, line. This is brand new and I did really like this so I think I'm going to keep this and get rid of this because this was also limited edition. So not too long ago I did a video about glowy primers and I reviewed these three and I like all three so these are all three going to stay. So I have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade 2. This was my one of my favorites actually uh, but this is this does have a bit of a tint to it. Um, and the Glossier Future Dew I also really like. This is actually my favorite for under foundations. And I did also like the ColourPop one, but this can turn you into a bit of a disco ball. But yeah, if you want to go for that very intense, glowy look, the pretty fresh, hydrating illuminator is nice. So I do want to keep that. I am going to be getting rid of the 4th Ray Turmeric Face Milk from ColourPop. I bought this for a full face of ColourPop before they had released the Pretty Fresh Primer. Um, and they didn't have a primer that was like more of a dewy thing, so I decided to try this from 4th Ray. It was okay, but nothing to write home about, so I know I won't be using that product. And then we've got some new things. These things just came in. I just either got these free as a gift with purchases, or I just bought these. So we have the Milk Hydro Grip Primer, and I bought a full size of this after using up a couple of point perks from Sephora, as well as a mini size, so this is one of my favorite primers. And I wanted to try some more milk makeup in 2021, so I finally managed to snatch this up from the French Sephora. And then I decided to, tr wanting to try this milk makeup, what's this called again? Something like the Watermelon Brightening Serum. I thought I could use this as a primer more so than anything else, so that's why I put it in here. I believe it's more of like a skincare product, but... Sometimes with primers it sort of overlaps, so I do want to keep that because I haven't tried it yet. And I've got two minis of the MAC Strobe Cream, and I've never tried Strobe Cream before. This I purchased because I'm going to be doing a full face of MAC. By the time this video goes up, that video will have happened. Uh, and then I bought another MAC product and I could choose a freebie, and I decided to buy another mini of this product. So yeah, I've got two of those right now, but I haven't tried this on my face yet. Oh, uh, and one more primer, the e.l.f. Putty Primer. I bought this because I was like, oh, it's good to have one of these primers, but for my dry skin, I really don't need this. <laughs> so that's why this primer is definitely going to go. So in terms of primer, we are getting rid of 9 and we're keeping 15. So that's about, what's that? That's from 24 to 15. So... That's about a third, roughly, that I'm getting rid of, so I feel pretty happy with that. Okay, this is everything that I've got going on in terms of setting spray, and there's a couple of things that are currently in use in my shop, my stash, that I'm trying to either make my mind up. Again, like primer with uh, face sprays, I tend to just use one up until it's gone, and then I move on to the next one, so a lot of these are unopened. Um, I'm currently using the Essence Fix and Last 18-hour makeup fixing spray, it smells okay, but I'm not a huge fan of the spritzer, but as I'm filming this, I've only been using it like two or three times, so I can't really say I've made up my mind about this. So this is gonna stay in my shop, my stash, until the end of March for sure. I'm filming this about halfway through the month, and then I'll make up my mind if I want to keep this or not, but I don't think it's my favorite, but good enough to use up. And then <laughs> a sad little bit left, only like this much in my MAC Fix Plus. I only use this to wet shadows though, but yeah, those live in my makeup drawer. And then all of these <laughs> are actually going to stay. I'm not going to be decluttering any of these. Um, the Catrice Prime and Fine Multi-Talent Fixing Spray, I've gone through several of these and to my horror, I found out I had never reviewed this yet on my blog. So I bought one for a Catrice video I did a few months ago and uh, I decided to keep it around uh, so I can review it and these ones only come with very little product, so you can use them up quite quickly. Um, and then I found the uh, Dewy Glow Fixing Spray with an illuminating finish. This, like that primer I just got rid of, has some shimmer particles. Apparently this was all a rage in the US beauty sphere. I kind of missed it because we tend to get Catrice products a lot more quickly over here. Um, and this was just one that never was on my radar. I remember using this pink version years ago, but I don't remember it actually containing shimmer. So I did buy this for a recent Catrice video to try it out. 
liked it okay enough, but I definitely need to give this more of a whirl because I'm not too sure I like the shimmer. One of my OG favorites is the Green Tea Fixing Spray from iHeart Revolution. I don't like a lot of Makeup Revolution products, but this is one of their best ones. It's currently all the time on sale, and I keep thinking that they're going to discontinue it, but this is one of my favorite makeup setting sprays. And another favorite is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I only ever buy the mini size, and this one I got as a freebie when I bought the Naked Wild West, so these are going to stay. And these are ones to try. The ColourPop Pretty Fresh uh, Spray and the Milk Hydro. Grip, Set, and Refresh Spray. This finally came to Europe. I just bought the smaller size. I tend to do that with primers and setting sprays. If I can buy a small size, I do that first before I commit to buy the full one. So yeah, that's zero <laughs> setting sprays, sprays decluttered. <laughs> okay, so I've quickly laid out my powders for you so we can have a look at these. Um, currently in my shop, my stash is this one from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Airbrush Flawless Finish in the shade One Fair. This is a lovely powder so far, but I am going through it quite quickly. I'm not sure if you can see. It's got a really big, really big dent, and I've only been using it since the start of the month. So about two weeks or so into using this product, but it is nice. Another product I don't want to get rid of is my MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Medium. I love this in the in the like summertime for that no makeup kind of look. Uh, I tend to just pop on some concealer on a hot summer day, and then I kind of use this as a powder foundation. It's the only thing that doesn't make me look dry and cakey. And a powder I want to keep for sure is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pressed. This is one of my all-time favorite setting powders. It's the only one that doesn't really make me look like a dry, cakey mess. Unlike <laughs> um, this powder foundation from Urban Decay. This is the Stay Naked to Fix in 30 and N. And this is just much more geared toward oily skin people. It's just I had never tried any sort of face powder product from Urban Decay. They just don't tend to do that many, and for a full face of Urban Decay, I bought this, and I tried it a bit more uh, over the past couple of months, and it's just not for me, so this is going to go. Another product that I'm going to be decluttering is this Physician's Formula Youthful Wear Powder. I bought this off of the recommendation of Jessica Braun, and she recommended this in the illuminating finish, and how it was very similar to like an hourglass thing. This is just way too dark for my complexion, and it doesn't sheer out, so it looked a bit crazy. Um, also over here in like the loose powder section, we can get rid of some things. I tend to just love two powder, like loose powders, and the rest of it I think I can go. Can go. Uh, one of my favorites is the Catrice Nude Illusion Loose Powder. This is lovely. I'm going to keep this. And the Too Faced Born This Way Transparent Loose Powder is lovely too. I did a complete trial with like seven loose powders, also like the Cody Airspun and like a lot of famous, famous powders. And I tried seven of them. And those two together with the Hourglass Veil Powder, which I only had as a mini, but I used it up. Uh, those were my top three favorites. So I'm going to keep my top two that I still have. And everything else that you see here in terms of loose powder is gonna go. So the RCMA No Color Powder, it's just a bit messy to use. It's a lovely powder. I think this was like my number four spot in that video. It's lovely, but th this salt shaker design, it's not for me. Maybelline Master Fix, um, no. I also tried their Fit Me Loose Powder, also didn't like it, so that's gonna go. And then this Essence My Skin Perfector Loose Fixing Powder. Again, it's got a matte finish like that primer I just got rid of, so it was way too drying for my skin. Now a loose powder that I did like when I did like when I tried it, I did a full face of Makeup Revolution in 2020, and I bought this loose powder to try. It, it's one of those with a little net that dispenses the product, and this is very finely milled. Um, ooh, but I, it doesn't really screw shut very well. But what I found with this is that it's so fine that it dusts everywhere and it kind of sets off my asthma, so <laughs> I didn't like it for that reason. And then these two products, I'm also going to get rid of the Innisfree No Sebum Mi Mineral Powder. This was nice, but I just, I'm not a loose powder fan, so if I have two, one that's a bit, a bit more of a setting powder and one that's a bit more glowy, I'm happy. And the Laura Mercier, uh, what's this called again? Translucent Loose Setting Powder. 
This is a cult favorite and it was one of my least favorite powders in that video and last year I kept it around because ooh, it's the Laura Mercier uh, powder and I want to try it again. I haven't used it since last year so <laughs> it just needs to go. And then of these, we've got six powders left here. I'm going to be keeping the L'Oreal because I think it's good to have a drugstore option and I did really like this powder. This is the True Match Super Blendable uh, Perfecting Powder. I tend to like the True Match line. This is in the shade Rose Ivory 1R1C. So it's the lightest one, I think. So that's nice. And then the Maybelline Fit Me I'm going to get rid of. This is 105 Natural Ivory. It was a bit too yellow toned for my liking. And from Essence and Catrice, I always like to keep one powder around just so I have one on hand. So I'm going to get rid of the Essence All About Silky Matte Powder. This was a nice pinky undertone, but this is newer and it seems to be quite a good powder from what I've tried. So I'm going to be keeping the Skin Loving Sensitive Mineral Powder. And then of these two, I am going to be uh, a little bit controversial here. Uh, this is the old version of this powder. So they now sell this, the 5-in-1 setting powder, and this is white. It's okay, it's, it's perfectly fine, it works well as a powder, but I just want to use this up first. This is the Prime and Fine Medifying Powder Waterproof in the transparent shade. Uh, this is my fourth or fifth one of these. I went through uh, several of these. Catrice primers are really good. Like I said, this is the replacement for that one, so I know I can go out and repurchase this once this is gone, but I currently do not need to keep both. So these are all the powders I'm getting rid of. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 powders that I'm getting rid of, and I knew I was going to get rid of this much uh, because I just really know what I like in terms of powder. I currently only have one powder um, that I don't own that I love, which is the Hourglass uh, Diffuse Light Powder. So I've kept one, two, three, four, five, six, seven powders, and we're getting rid of 11. So that's definitely two thirds gone. <laughs> so that's, uh, I think, a good number. All right, so I've laid out all of my concealers for you. And here again, we need to get rid of some things. There are definitely some things in here that are older, but again, concealer, I tend to be pretty good at using them up before I move on. Well, not before I move on to something else, but. I tend to use up a couple of concealers every single year and I know there are a few on my wish list to use up this year. For instance, I'm currently working on this uh, discontinued Born This Way concealer. This is the Naturally Radiant concealer from Too Faced. I have this in the shade Fair or Fair Beige um, and this has been discontinued but this is the glowy version of this. And this I don't like because this makes me look really old and like 10 years older because it emphasizes all of my dry lines. Um, but yeah, this has been discontinued. I'm currently using, trying to use this up in my Shop My Stash. Um, I thought I could use it up quite quickly, but it does come with quite a lot of product. So I think I have like another month or so to go with this. But this is currently being used up. And as you can predict, I'm going to get rid of the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer in the Sun Snow. Just to show you, um, this is a bit more pink toned. This is far too yellow for me as well. So the undertone I like better of the other one as well. But I can no longer buy it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll first do the bottom row and then we'll do the top row. Um, new to me because I want to film a full face of Milani, I bought the Conceal and Perfect Concealer in the shade zero, no, 110 Nude Ivory. I've never used this, so I need to still try this. So I'm going to keep it. The ColourPop Pretty Fresh I liked so much better than a no filter, but this is going to go on the maybe, maybe pile. If I'm keeping a lot of concealers, I don't really feel the need to keep this around because it was okay, but it didn't blow me away. Now, another concealer I'd like to try and use up this year is the Moist Creamy Concealer from Apieu. Not because this is old or it's on its last legs, nothing of the sort, but I really remember liking this concealer when I tried it. Up here is a Korean beauty brand. I have this in the shade Porcelain and it was really, really lovely. So I do want to keep this. And I would also like to try and use up this Kiko Milano Skin Tone Concealer in the shade 2. And this is really, really funny. It is a very small packaging. So this is, I think, only three and a half milliliters of product. So I know I can use this up quite quickly. I really enjoyed the product. Um, I don't really swatch in my declutter videos because then I just want to keep everything. 
Um, but it's got an applicator that rolls. Do you see that? And then you get your application. So I thought that was very clever. <laughs> and I just want to, because I love the product so, so much, I think I, this is another one I can use up this year. What's going to go is the Maybelline Super Stay Concealer. This is in the shade Fair, and this is actually gone, I think. It's just, it's a bit of a weird one, because I did like the product, but I barely get any product on the wand anymore. And it's almost as if the consistency of this product is quite thick, and the wand is kind of like suspended in this container, and all the product is still stuck to the sides, and I can't reach the product with the wand. And I know I can cut open a product like this, However, I'm very much against that because it will mess with the longevity of how this will keep because I believe that products are come in packaging for a reason. Um, so there probably aren't the kind of preservatives in this that it will actually keep for longer than a week if I do cut it open. So out of sanity, like out of sanitary reasons, I don't want to mess with this product. So I'm going to get rid of this because I can no longer use it. This I want to keep. This is the L'Oreal Perfect Match Concealer in... Is it also 1RC? Oh, the shade is gone. 1RC Rose Ivory. So this goes with the powder, and I will also be keeping the foundation in this line. This is lovely, and this has got a peachy undertone, so I feel this corrects and conceals at the same time. I'm going to get rid of my Urban Decay All Nighter Concealer. I bought this when it came out, used it twice, <laughs> and I've only ever kept this around for the packaging and because I love Urban Decay so much, it's one of my favorite makeup brands. Um, but yeah, I don't love this, so uh, why should I keep it? I did really like the Stay Naked concealer. It's not my favorite. I like the other one that I still have better, uh, but this is in the shade 20NN and I really like the shade match of this, so this is going to stay. Um, the other one I'm going to keep then is the Urban Decay Naked Skin. This is still unopened. I bought this right before they discontinued it, and I've never opened it, so I know it's still okay. Um, but yeah, this is just, again, one of those where I'm like, at some point in time, I should just get rid of it. Because here's the thing what I tend to do if I love a product, like if I love a concealer or a foundation, and I use it up completely, I tend to buy it again, if I can, or a similar product by the same brand. So I've done that with this. And I've done that with this, and I've done that with this. However, since then, other concealers have come to the market that I didn't want to try. So these are all three of them unopened, just sitting in my drawer, unused. But I do really like all three of these. So uh, let me see, the Urban Decay Naked Skin is in Fair Neutral. The NARS, uh, this is the um, Radiant Creamy Concealer, is in Vanilla. And the Maybelline Fit Me is in 15 Fair. So I'm going to keep all three of these because those are three of my OG favorites. Oh, and the same goes for this. I used up the Essence Stay All Day 16 Hour Concealer last year. This is in 20 Soft Beige. And this is one I went through completely. So that's why I do want to keep this around because I repurchase it. It's unopened as well. Uh, this is one that I wanted to try from Essence, the Stay Natural Concealer, and this is one of those like clicky pens. Worked well enough. I think this will be nice in the summertime, and these pen-like concealers you can usually use up quite quickly. Oh, and <laughs> another repurchase that, I, that is unopened after I loved it was the Rimmel Match Perfection Concealer in 010 Ivory. It took a very long time for this shade to come to the Dutch market, um, but it has a, a brush tip as well, and this is another one that I believe you can use up quite quickly. Repurchased and opened, then, are the Catrice Liquid Camouflage and the Revolution uh, Conceal and Define. These are two of my all-time favorite concealers. I have the Catrice one in 007 Natural Rose, and this one is in C3. So these two I love. They're not going to go anywhere, but they are open. So these may have to be put in like a Shop My Stash at some point this year, just to try and get more use out of them. I'm going to be keeping the MAC Studio Fix Concealer. This is one that's opened and that I think at some point I can just use up. Uh, this is brand new to me, the Milk Flex Concealer. I uh, haven't tried yet, so we're going to keep that. The Tarte Concealer, the Shape Tape. I'm going to get rid of this one. This I've kept around for years, saying things like, oh, I'm going to keep this around because this is what I use when I do a cut crease. I don't think I've done a cut crease in like a year and a half, so 
I can get rid of that. The Skin Loving Concealer by Essence is bright, quite new to me, so I want to keep that. And then the True Skin Concealer by Catrice. Yes, I'm getting rid of this. Um, this doesn't work for me. It, it, like the Too Faced Born This Way one, it is too drying on my complexion, and it makes me look 10 years older than I am, so that's why this is going to go. And this I kind of bought for funsies. This is the All Round Concealer Palette from Catrice, and I was like, shall I keep this around? And I was like, I know I will never use this again. <laughs> so, uh, and this is going to go bad much more quickly than anything else. Uh, so this is uh, an OG Catrice palette that is still for sale, I found out, when I did a throwback kind of video with Catrice products that they've never discontinued. And these are okay. Uh, this is actually a nice cream contour on me, but I never cream contour, so this can go. From these pots, I think I'm going to keep all four. I love the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is well well used and well loved, though you can't really see it, but I feel I don't need that much product with this, so I want to keep that. The NARS Soft Matte. Look at that dent, but I haven't used it for a while, so this I need to go back to or, to remind myself to like figure out how much I really like it. And then the Charlotte Tilbury is quite new to me as well. This is her... What is this called? There's no name on the back. It's her corrector in Fair. And I don't have that many correctors, so that's why I do want to keep it around. And then the Catrice Camouflage Cream. This is unopened. I think I can get rid of this. I kind of bought this for an OG like throwback video as well. And I was like, oh, this is such a such a nostalgic product. I used to love this concealer. I didn't know it was still around, so I bought it, and now I'm like, looking at what I'm keeping, and I'm like, this can go. By the way, looking at what I'm keeping, this ColourPop concealer can just go, because I know I won't get through this. And then these four I know I want to keep. So we have the Ink Corrector Concealer from Peri Para, we have the Ink Corrector Corrector in Peach from Peri Para, and we have the Catrice One Drop Coverage in 003 Porcelain and the new Ordinary Concealer in 1.1N. These are all lovely. This I still need to play around with. This is one of those repurchases after I've used one up completely. And these two are just stunning, stunning concealers. This is a great peach toned corrector for me for my darker under eyes, in fact. This is one of my favorite combos. <laughs> and then this concealer is lovely too. So we're getting rid of eight concealers, which compared to what I'm keeping, it's not that much. I'm very well aware, but you should know that, as I mentioned, with concealer, I tend to go through quite a few of them every year. So I know that as the year progresses, I'll, I'll be able to use some of these up. And uh, concealer, as I mentioned, is, is a product where I tend to repurchase the ones that I know I love. Actually, I've got one more for you. We're, we're going into nine because I have the uh, infallible more than concealer from L'Oreal. I was like, I had a L'Oreal concealer somewhere else, but this was also way, way too dry and cakey for me. So we're checking that in. So yeah, that's nine concealers that I didn't like. So those are going to go. Welcome to all 46 of my foundations. Yay! We're doing a foundation declutter in this video as well. I really like trying foundations for my blog. They are reviews that tend to do really well. So that's why I have so many, because I try out a lot. And I don't necessarily tend to talk a lot about foundation on my YouTube channel. I tend to go more for eyeshadow palettes, more so than like base products. So yeah, I, I do have a lot, because I do have another sort of... <laughs> channel <laughs> channel that I use for makeup reviews and that's 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 what you what you're looking at here um I have to say I sort of made a split we've got more affordable stuff over here and we've got more high-end stuff towards the left and I want to get rid of things in both categories but I can already tell you just looking at how everything is laid out that more of the affordable things are going to go than the more expensive stuff. I have dry, pretty sensitive skin, and I find that high-end foundations just cater to my needs a lot better <laughs> than the drugstore does. However, I have a couple of firm favorites from the drugstore that I want to keep around, but I think I'm looking at this and I'm like, ooh, 
that can go, 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 that I'm like, oh, did I still have that, you know? It's really been one of those things. So I want to keep the things around that I love, and then I can try some new things again. So yeah. Um, in my shop, my stash currently are these two. The Hourglass Vanish Stick in Alabaster, and the It Cosmetics CC Cream in Fair. Um, this I'm trying to use up at the moment, so uh, that's another thing. I like to use up two or three foundations every year. Um, this is another one of those products that I do really try to use up consciously, and this I just sort of keep in there as a backup right now so that if this is gone, I'm not without a foundation. So these I'm going to keep around. So let me rearrange this a little bit. So we have the Catrice and the Essence stuff together here, I think. <laughs> that's better. I kind of just laid it out. Of these, I know I want to keep these two Catrice ones. So the Clean ID Hydro BB Cream. Um, this is in the shade Light. This doesn't come in a whole lot of shades, but I did really like this for the summertime. And I don't have that many BB creams anymore, so I like to have one or two. And the Catrice HD Liquid Radiance. This is the radiant version or dewy version of the one in the black bottle that a lot of people on YouTube rave about, but that's matte. This is dewy, and this has been discontinued, but it is my favorite Catrice foundation. So I want to keep it around for that. And then everything else from Catrice, including this, <laughs> all three of these are gonna go. So the Poreless Perfection Mousse. Oh my, this looked horrible on my skin when I tried it, so that's gonna go. The All Matte Plus, it made me itchy. I tried this again in my throwback video because this was one of the first foundations I ever tried. So I put it in my OG, never discontinued products from Catrice video. And the shade is nice, the texture is okay, but it just, it makes me itchy. So it needs to go. And the True Skin in uh, 002 Neutral Ivory, I tried it again right before I sat down to film this declutter video and like the concealer, it makes me look 10 years older than I am. So, these three are gonna go. Um, and then from Essence, I'm going to keep the Pretty Natural. This is newer to me, and unlike the uh, True Skin from Catrice, which was a newer launch from them, this is a launch that did work for me. So this is the Pretty Natural Hydrating Foundation in Neutral Alabaster 020. And then I'm going to be getting rid of the Fresh and Fit Awake Makeup. Um, as I mentioned several times, I do quite a lot of Essence and Catrice videos, so I always want to keep some of their products on hand so I can always do a full face with their products. Um, but yeah, I no longer need this. Shall we just do this? We're going to do this side first. So I've got the ColourPop Pretty Fresh and I'm going to keep the Tinted Moisturizer and I'm going to get rid of the foundation. I just liked the Tinted Moisturizer a lot better. I have mine in the shade Fair 4N and this is in Fair 20N. I just like the moisturizer, Tinted Moisturizer so much better. The Ordinary Foundation in the shade 1.1N I want to keep. I wish that this came with an actual lid so I can travel with it because this is such a small little bottle and this is one that's about halfway gone so I know I can use this up so this is gonna stay. These three however are all gonna go. The CYO I bought because Taylor Wynn was re raving about it back when this was a thing and I bought it and like two weeks later the brand was no longer available. I've not used it since so that's gonna go. I don't know why I bother trying Max Factor foundations. Um, they're always too dark for me, um, even though this is a shade called Porcelain. This is way too dark, so this is gonna go. And the ELF Flawless Finish Foundation. I know so many people love this, but it just wasn't quite right for me. I don't think about this foundation. I forgot that this was even in my collection. This has to go. So we've moved up some of the affordable stuff here. Um, the Zoeva one, I definitely want to keep. This is lovely. This is their Authentic Skin Foundation in 030 N Ambition. The matching concealer of this I used up. And the foundation is really, really lovely too. So this one I definitely want to keep. The Kiko Milano Insta Moisture Foundation I want to keep around. Like the concealer, it really, really just surprised me. I'd never tried a Kiko Milano foundation before. What shade is this in? In 1R, which I believe is the lightest shade, but it had a good undertone for me, and 
I've only used it once or twice so far, so I definitely want to put this at a, in a shop my stash at some point and try it more. My favorite all-time BB cream, the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream in number 21. If you want to try a Korean BB cream, I would recommend this, especially if you have a cool to neutral undertone. I don't mind that this is a little gray leaning because it works really well on me. And then, whoo, a lot of this is going to go, you guys, a lot of this. The Rimmel Breathable Foundation. Again, one of those foundations where I'm like, oh yeah, I still had that too. I should just get rid of it. The Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. I used this, tried it, loved it. It's been discontinued, and ever since I really haven't felt like using this. So that's why this is going to go. And because if I go for a very lightweight uh, foundation from the drugstore, the ordinary one is one, but I also really like the True Match from L'Oreal. This is in 1N Ivory. This is perfect shape match for me. Lovely consistency. And I'm going to be keeping my infallible 24-hour fresh wear in 20 Ivory as well. This is one of my favorite all-time drugstore foundations. Holy Grail status, for sure. So I'm going to keep that. And then this, as I'm filming today's video, I'm still planning my full face of Milani. So I want to keep this foundation around, but it's a full coverage foundation. And I've actually spotted on Beauty Bay that Milani now does like a healthy glow base kind of thing. That really speaks to me. So I want to try and order that and then decide what I'm going to use in my video. But yeah, I think I'll just keep this around for now, but it may end up in a declutter soon uh, because I don't need a full coverage foundation. The Flower Light Illusion Foundation. Oh my, I finally was able to buy this because Flower Beauty is finally available in Dutch drugstores. They came to the Netherlands in 2020. I have mine in the lightest shade that is available here, which is Porcelain L1. It's orange on me. It oxidizes. It's way, way too dark. It's a lovely foundation though. It's a really good texture. I really like everything this foundation does. It's about three shades too dark for me though. Uh, of these, I, oh, I last year I kept around the Healthy Mix because the Bourjois Healthy Mix is one of my all-time favorite foundations. This is Vanilla Claire number 51. And I know I'm, I'm getting rid of like half, maybe more than half of all of my drugstore foundations. So do I want to keep it or not? It's going to go on the maybe pile. The Maybelline Dream Radiant Liquid. Um, I used to love the original version. Now it's been reformulated and I don't like it anymore. So this has got to go. And where I love the Maybelline or Makeup Revolution concealer, their foundations, hmm. I like this better than the Conceal and Define foundation. This is a Conceal and Hydrate. It's in the shade F2. It's an okay shade match, but this is another one where I was like, oh yeah, I have that one too. Not interested in going back to it. So this is one I've tried. I liked it okay. I don't need to keep it around. Okay, so I've pretty much halved my drugstore collection because I'm keeping 11 and I have 13 that I'm getting rid of. And we have one maybe over here. So we'll see how we go. But I know these are my loves. <laughs> so let me move them over so you can see. This is, this is the high-end section. Um, so these are the more expensive ones. And like I said, these are some of my loves. Um, my, my ultimate favorite foundation is the YSL All Hours. Uh, this is in BR20. Um, this is the one that I do keep around though, not for every day. This is more like a special occasion thing. Like if I need a foundation that's going to last through like sweaty dance parties and stuff like that, this is what I wear. So this I'm going to keep. I can get rid of the all nighter, like the concealer. It's too matte, too full coverage. Bought it, used it a handful of times, and then it just sat in my makeup collection because it had a pretty bottle. The Naked Skin, however, uh, this is one I need to start using up this year. It's about halfway gone. Mine is in the shade 1.5. This is, of course, discontinued, and they finally came out with a new hydrating foundation. It's not the same as this. This, this is definitely a lot more lightweight, 
and this I had to get very much used to. I think this may be really nice on me in the summertime though, so I'm going to sort of keep it in there. But this is another one that if I use up the It Cosmetics one, I think I want to try and use this one up next. The Anastasia foundation I did really like. It's very similar to the Zoeva one, so that's gonna stay. It's a really nice illuminating finish. The Fenty Beauty, um, this is one I'm going to keep around for now. This is the Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation in the shade 120. And the reason why I'm keeping this around is because I'm, I'm, tr I'm playing around with the idea of doing a full face of Fenty Beauty towards the end of 2021. So that's why I'm going to keep it around, but I don't think I'll keep it in my main makeup collection. I actually have a little drawer where some products go that are like in purgatory. Like I actually want to get rid of these, but I still want to film with them or I want to do something with them. Uh, this foundation is lovely, but it transfers onto everything. So I'm going to keep it around for a full face of Fenty Beauty. Um, but it's not my favorite foundation for sure. So this is sort of like, it kind of needs to go more like over there rather than keep. <laughs> um, and everything else, I'm looking at what I have lying in front of me. I, I, I want to keep all of these. I want to keep all of these. This Dior Backstage Foundation is life. Like this is the one I travel with because it has such an easy packaging. Zero N is the shade. Really lovely, really lovely shade match for me, for sure. Uh, the MAC Water Weight Foundation with the SPF 30 in NC15. I used this one up in 2020 and I repurchased it for my full face of MAC because I just loved it that much. I also used up a Chanel Vada de Mure Aqua and then this was released, the Le Beige uh, sheer healthy glow tinted moisturizer and I actually like this even better this is in a shade light i love this in the summertime so that's not going to go anywhere i think this has been discontinued so that sort of throws me off when it comes to not wanting to get rid of this uh the double wear nude water fresh foundation by estee lauder uh this is in one and zero porcelain and this is a lovely foundation i can't get rid of that the replacement of that foundation is this, the Futurist Hydra Rescue. I saw this in a lot of declutters at the end of 2020. I have mine in 1N0 porcelain as well. This was a bit dark for me, but I've only tried it once so far. I got this with a like a gift voucher, so that's a newer thing I still need to try. And the same actually goes for these three right here in the front. The Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder in 02 Fair. The Giorgio Armani Mio Nude in 1.5 and the Giorgio Armani um, Luminous Silk in 3. These three products are some of the latest, like, last foundations I bought. I still need to put these to the test. So, I'm always, like, testing out, like, four or five foundations <laughs> every year. So, these are the ones I'm trying out this year. Um, this Clinique one, I'm not sure about that one yet. The Tarte Rainforest of the Sea Foundation, this is in Fair Beige. This is one I want to keep because this I know I can use up. It's about halfway gone. And that's lovely for spring. And then the NARS Sheer Glow, this had been sitting in my stash unused for such a long time. And I thought I didn't like it. I thought I didn't like it. And then I put it in my shop, my stash in February to prepare for these declutters. And I ended up really liking it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's gonna stay but I think I will be getting rid of my Too Faced Born This Way foundation it's just a bit old I got this around the same time as the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea and that's about halfway gone and this isn't even a third of the way gone so that tells me that I don't love this as much as I think I do so this can go the naked the stay naked I'm going to get rid of because we now have the Hydromaniac and I still have my naked skin this was a bit matte for my taste so the concealer I, I felt I could get away with, this is also in 20NN. The shade match is lovely, I just wish this was more lightweight and a bit more dewy. And then the Clinique Even Better Glow Foundation in CN28 Ivory. This is a lovely foundation, it really really is. Uh, but I haven't used it in a while, so this is perhaps one I want to go back to to see how much I like it. You know what, I've got plenty of foundations, I'm not going to keep the bourgeois one. And then the Fenty, like I said, this is going to go into purgatory. 
So this is everything we're getting rid of in terms of foundations. There are 17 in total. Uh, like I said, I pretty much got rid of more than half. I did decide to also get rid of this one. So there are 14 drugstore foundations that I'm getting rid of. Um, but I'm keeping most of my high-end ones because I'm only getting rid of three. So yeah, that's it for my base makeup declutter today. So thank you very much for watching this today. I've got a couple more declutters coming your way for sure. So please stay tuned if you'd like to see me declutter my makeup. And if you would like to see my makeup reorganized and you want to see those messy drawers become a little bit more pleasing to the eye, then stay tuned for that as well because I will be filming my makeup reorganization for sure once I've put all of these declutters up. So that's coming your way. Plus I make other videos as well over on this channel three times a week. So I would love to have you join my little family here in case you're interested. And for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>